Good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to the Suburban Proletarian. My name is Greg, and today I want to take a look at hopefully addressing an issue I've been having with one of my watches. Uh, the watch in question is my Victorinox Chrono Classic. I've talked about this watch on the channel before. I bought it in an identical Chrono Classic about two years ago out of the clearance case at one of my favorite local wholesale places and uh, with the intention of flipping them on eBay for a modest profit. But when it came time to actually list the watches, I discovered a cosmetic defect on this one, which meant that I couldn't sell it as brand new. I didn't want to take a risk of putting it on my eBay channel and maybe getting some bad feedback or something. So at that point in time, I decided to keep the watch and review it, which I did here on the channel uh, last year. Uh, in researching the watch and its movement uh, for doing that review, I discovered that unlike a lot of Victorinox watches, which feature Ronda Swiss quartz movements, uh, this one actually has an ETA quartz movement in it, uh, the G10.211, I believe, from ETA. And in researching that movement, I read a lot of comments on some of the discussion forums about just how unusually accurate the uh, G10.211 from ETA tends to be. So I decided to check it against my watch check app. I wore the watch for a couple of weeks and I checked it on a daily basis. And sure enough, it was running at less than a tenth of a second per day, a gain of less than a tenth of a second per day. Um, the watch check app that you can download for your phone only gives you readings uh, to one decimal place. So it just kept saying plus 0.0, .0 seconds per day. So I didn't know exactly how accurate it was, but I knew that it was more accurate than average. The average standard quartz movement, I find, generally gains. They tend to gain uh, rather than lose, although some do lose. But they tend to gain about 0.2 to 0.3 seconds per day. So two tenths to three tenths of a second per day. This one was less than a tenth of a second per day. So I knew it was pretty good, but then I put it down and completely forgot about this watch. It was sitting on my desk or on top of my dresser for several months. And when I finally came back to it and decided to put it back on, I was gonna check it against the Watch Check app again. And I didn't plan this out at all. It just happened to be the case that it had been exactly 140 days since I had last checked the watch. And in that 140 days, sitting on my dresser, this watch gained exactly 1.4 seconds. So, I mean, it's very, very easy to do the math. It was just fortuitous. So this watch was literally gaining when it was sitting stationary on a desktop, one one hundredth of a second per day, which is unbelievable accuracy. A lot of people think that you need to buy some sort of a quartz chronometer certified watch to get that level of accuracy. It, you really get a, just a guarantee of that type of accuracy when you pay big money for a uh, ultra high frequency, thermocompensated, special high accuracy quartz movement you're paying for that guarantee of accuracy. But this watch is proof that you can get very, very, very good accuracy, which actually exceeds uh, chronometer specifications from a very standard quartz movement. So a couple of months ago, I was very surprised when I picked up the watch and put it on and it lost something like five minutes in a day. And I thought, well, maybe I accidentally pulled the stem out or something inadvertent and I made sure everything, I reset the watch and it lost like 10 minutes the next day and it lost 15 minutes the next day. And I just threw my hands up in the air and put it aside on my desktop again. And I just checked it, I don't know, four or five days ago and it hadn't gained even a second in several months again. So I'm thinking, what on earth is going on here? So I started, I went to the Google and Googled it and I got a lot of hits. It's not an unheard of problem for a quartz watch to lose big chunks of time uh, on the wrist, but keep perfect time, you know, on a dresser top. Uh, but the 
answers to what is causing this have been virtually non-existent. Most of the answers I saw in the discussion forums were, you know, I hope you bought the watch under warranty, send it back and let the manufacturer deal with it. But I did find one response which intrigued me and it made a lot of sense. And a guy said that his sister had come to him with the exact same problem. The watch would keep perfect time on a tabletop, but then as soon as she would put it on her wrist, it would lose huge chunks of time in a day. But after he puzzled over this for a little while, she admitted to him that she had dropped it onto the floor at some point in time. And it occurred to him that maybe the battery had become jarred and slightly dislodged uh, from its mounting tabs or whatever, and wasn't getting a perfectly good contact. So it would run fine when it was stationary, but when you would move it around, it would intermittently lose contact uh, with the module inside. And that makes a lot of sense to me. And after I read that, I remembered that I had left this watch sitting on the kitchen table, um, I don't know, about six months or so ago. And I came downstairs in the morning and where was the watch? It was lying on the kitchen floor. So obviously somebody who wasn't supposed to be up on the kitchen table was up on the kitchen table in the dark doing one of these jobs until it fell onto the floor. Now I examined the watch, I didn't see any problem with it. it. It had only fallen maybe three feet onto a linoleum floor which has wood underneath it, not particularly hard. I didn't see any damage, the watch was still running and so I didn't think anything of it. But I'm guessing that's what my problem is here. And the only way we're gonna find that out is to open it up over on the tabletop. So let's go see what's going on inside this watch. All right, guys, so here is the offending watch in question. My Victorinox Chrono Classic. As I've already stated, it's almost supernaturally accurate until quite recently when it has a tendency to stop completely while I'm wearing it. It does have an end-of-life indicator uh, for the battery, which would make the second hand skip two seconds in one second and then wait two seconds and skip two seconds in one second but it's not doing that so it's not showing that the battery is almost dead um, so we're going to open this thing up and see what's going on inside here to do that I'm going to have to remove the uh, bracelet by releasing the spring bars here and I'm going to use my trusty case back wrench uh, my cheap Indian case back wrench uh, to open the case back. Some people will say that you cannot possibly use one of these without destroying your watch, without scratching up the case back. Um, and I agree that a better quality case wrench would probably be better, but I've become very adept at using this thing. And if you're careful, you can make one of these cheap ones work just fine. Uh, but I'm not going to pain you with actually loosening the case back. We're just going to pause here and move on. All right, so I have released the spring bars to detach one end of the bracelet, and I've already loosened the case back using the case back wrench. So we'll just continue unscrewing the case back until we can remove that. And sure enough, it would appear that the battery is tilted at a rather unusual angle inside there and appears to only barely be making contact with this little gold-plated contact right here. So I could just push it back down but since this watch has had the same battery in it for a couple of years now uh, I've gone ahead and bought a brand new Reynata number 394 battery. So we're just going to do a battery change. I don't like to open watch cases any more than absolutely necessary. Now one thing that's pretty cool is if you have a watch with an ETA movement in it, ETA publishes these technical communications that will give you all sorts of information about the movement inside your watch. Here on page 3 it shows one how to affect a battery change by simply inserting your forceps here and prying up, which is what's happened to this battery already. It's already partly pried up, which I think is causing our problem. So we're just going to 
do exactly what the drawing shows. We're going to pop this old battery out of here and put in the new one. You'll note I used metal forceps or tweezers to remove the old battery. You do not want to grab the new battery using metal forceps like this because you'll be um, shorting it out or grounding it out and draining the battery. So for this I have some nice plastic forceps which are non-conductive. And we'll just drop the battery down into its housing and as the manual says press the battery down firmly into its housing that is much better than the old one was then we'll just wipe off any fingerprints and reinstall the case back. So she's all tightened up and as you can see I used my cheap Indian case back wrench without making any scratches on the case back. So we'll just reconnect the bracelet and Head back over to the bookshelves for a wrap-up. You can see that it is running properly here. And uh, if I have any additional problems, if this hasn't solved the issue, I will edit that into the video before publishing it. And so it does appear that our problem was a battery that was making intermittent contact with the electrical contacts that power the circuit inside the watch. Hopefully this has been helpful to one of you. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please go ahead and click the like button down below. If you hated it, click the dislike button. You will not hurt my feelings, but you will be giving me useful feedback. Um, if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more like it, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, it doesn't cost a dime. It takes a fraction of a second and you can, of course, unsubscribe at any time. Uh, if you're already a subscriber, consider clicking the little bell icon down below. That will allow YouTube to send you notifications when I post updates to the channel. And when I do that, I hope to see each and every one of you here at that time. Later, guys.